this one. Should I just stay over there? Well, we can start here. Once we get to that part, we'll just back it up. And then it's a couple lines steep, a couple lines steep, a couple lines steep, a couple steep, 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 and then James, steep, steep, steep. There's a lot of steep lines where we don't have to do anything. There, I saw one here, but it's not here anymore. It's Somebody else took it. Oh, here it is, right here. Do you need it? Keep these things from falling on the floor. Yeah, thank you.
Good evening. Ooh, a little louder. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church and School. I am Pastor Amy Barsh Odell. This is our Good Friday evening worship. I'm glad that you are here. We do not believe it is an accident that you are here. Salem's mission is to share God's love. We are very happy that everyone is here this evening, both in person and on Zoom. This is our Good Friday hybrid worship service, so we have a wonderful number of people here in person, and we also have quite a few people on our Zoom program as well. Um, we are recording tonight's worship service. It will be available on our church YouTube station this evening after I get home. And if you are interested in more information about Salem Lutheran Church and School, you may visit our website at salemlutheranglendale.org, salemlutheranglendale.org. Important information for the end of today's worship. Um, it will be, I ask you to leave in silence. If you are on Zoom, I ask you to take a moment of silence before resuming the rest of your evening activities. If you are in person, please wait to talk until you are outside of the building or even on your return home. Taking this extra time of silence is a gift that we receive on this holy night. Please guard this silent time. I will remind you again at the end of worship as well. Life and death stand side by side as we enter into Good Friday. In John's Passion account, Jesus reveals the power and glory of God, even as he is put on trial and sentenced to death. Standing with the disciples at the foot of the cross, we pray for the whole world as Christ's death offers life for all. We gather in solemn devotion, but always with the promise that the tree around which we assemble is indeed a tree of life. We depart silently as we wait. It is Friday, but Sunday is coming. Here at Salem, we believe there is no person or created thing outside the act of love and grace of God made known to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Let us remember how the sky went dark. Let us remember how his mother was there. Let us remember how people mocked him. Let us remember how his friends fled. Let us remember how in the midst of all of that, Jesus still chose love. Let us worship our holy God. Please stand for hymn number 353.
even their affirmation of faith. We believe that the crucifixion shows us the worst in humanity. Violence inflicted on the innocent, shame poured out in excess, mockery for the abandonment of those we love. We believe that Jesus shows us the best in humanity. Grace where grace is undeserved, humility in the face of power, justice in the face of oppression, love that overcomes. So today, as one voice, we choose the latter. We choose love. We choose grace. We choose We choose to Let it be so. Amen. Amen. And now our call to confession. Good Friday belongs to confession, for on this day we hold up to the light everything that went wrong 2,000 years ago. And as we do, we are reminded of everything that is going wrong in the present day. So we breathe deeply. We bow our heads. We speak the truth out loud about who we long to be. And we trust that God is already reaching out for us as we speak, knowing that Oops, my bad. Knowing that, let us pray together. God of unfathomable mercy, if we were there, we'd like to think that we would have defended you. We'd like to think that we would have stopped the guards and silenced the mockery, protected your body, and defended your name. However, if we're honest with ourselves, we probably would have been at the edge of the crowd, silent and afraid. How often are we silent and afraid? How often do we wait for the stones to cry out for us? Forgive us. Please forgive us. Amen. The words of forgiveness. Even from his place on the cross, even while being met with cruelty and violence, Jesus overflows with truth and grace. He sees those around him, he speaks connection and belonging into existence. He offers forgiveness. Friends, if this is true from the cross, it is certainly true here. We are surrounded by grace. We are held in love. We are forgiven. Over and over and over again. That truth never changes. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God who asked for a drink, God who was killed by the state, God who offered love and grace even from the cross, we are at a loss for words. What do we do with this day? The air is heavy. Our hearts are heavy. The suffering of this world feels particularly close, spilling out all over us. And yet, even in this space, we know you are moving. Even in this space, we know that this is not the end. Give us the heart to hear this story and the courage to let it change us. Gratefully we pray. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. For you shall not go out in haste, and you shall not go in flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which he had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering 
and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured himself out to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of so many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but my prayers. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. And you are To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of the shine surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. I can count all of my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, 
Come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. You who fear the Lord, praise him. You are, all you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise the reward the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard my cry to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The Lord shall be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May our hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him, future generations will be told about the Lord, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. The word of the Lord. A reading from Hebrews. After the Holy Spirit says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Let us pray together. Holy Christ, 2,000 years after your crucifixion, we still betray you, still deny you, still forget your resurrection promise. 2,000 years after your crucifixion, our world still clings to fear, still disregards justice, still resorts to violence. Have mercy on us, O oh God. It is a testament to the incomprehensible power of God that a device of torture has become a symbol of ultimate love. The foot of the cross is a holy space because it speaks deep truth about humanity and deep truth about God. The cross reminds us that we, as humans, are capable of pettiness, of injustice, of violence. We grasp for power in ridiculous and dangerous ways. We let fear control our actions and our interactions. The cross assures us that God desires intimacy with us so deeply that God became human. 
God did not just look human. God did not just hang out as a human for as long as it was convenient. God, in Jesus of Nazareth, became really fully human. So human that he died on the cross. And so it is at the foot of the cross that we can most clearly see our need for God. It is at the foot of the cross that we can gaze most intently upon God's love for us. At this time, we have a dramatic reading of the Passion. I will ask our, our readers to come forward. And I would like to uh, let everyone know that there will be a part for the congregation as well, so please pay attention to the slides at the time that it is appropriate. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. And again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its sheath. I am, am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. And since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other people, person, the disciple who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold out there, and they were standing around it warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus in the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, and they asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, 
a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If, if this man were a criminal, we would have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves, and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. I would ask him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for your Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not to this man, Barabbas. Now Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, king of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, He was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over you is guilty of the greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king puts himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat at the judge's bench at the place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Jesus asked them, 
Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then they handed him over to be crucified. Please stand. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea was also a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to take him away, let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with 
of spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Remember to leave this worship service in silence. As you stand in the shadow of the cross, may the darkness guard your heart with love. May the chilled air fill, your holy, fill you with holy breath. May you rest in the peaceful uncertainty of knowing that things are not as they seem. It is Friday, but Sunday is coming. Amen. We meet in silence. <laughs> 